oh we're live on youtube hold on okay let me go off uh, video <laughs> yeah. and we'll talk about this yeah. later. yeah yeah uh it's just about starting but it's okay here we go should we do intro music hello everyone welcome to another ask the expert session and today we have stephen bell go ahead stephen Hey everybody, welcome to another session of the ServiceNow Community Ask the Expert. And uh, today we're gonna to be talking about scripting resources. I've done this twice before. I do it about every two years, things change. Um, I did one in 2016, did another in 2018, and here we are, 2020. I'll be going over what's available to you as a developer um, in ServiceNow and uh, also various training options, things to take it to the next level or uh, learn you know, the very basics of things. So we'll be cutting through all of that today. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, venues inside ServiceNow, a lot of different programming venues, and we'll be talking about some of those. Um, all right, so let's get moving here. All right, this is me. I'm uh, Stephen Bell, I'm my uh, five-year MVP, and I work for Accenture. Uh, partner of uh, ServiceNow, and I'm certified in multiple topics and as a trainer in multiple topics. And I also have been writing for uh, the community since 2013 and doing videos since about 2016. So, all right. So, ServiceNow, what makes it up? Um, that's a very, very complex picture. So, there are a variety of things uh, that make up the platform. Some of them are primary, some are secondary. Some of those things are available to you as a developer, some are not. And uh, what I'd like to do here is kind of walk down some of the basics and then uh, show you where to find out more. So there is a place called the Technology Stack. It is located underneath Systems Diagnostic Stat Stats. And uh, we'll go there here in a minute and I'll demonstrate how you can download the 4,000 page document uh, PDF that contains all of the technologies and licenses that ServiceNow has that uh, make up the entire platform. So it's pretty amazing. Um, the JavaScript version we're using right now is kind of interesting. It's a mixed bag. Um, mostly it's ECMA 2.6.2. There are aspects of the ECMA 5 in the platform, but notice that it's uh, the XT, EXT side of the platform, and you'll notice that it's uh, zero dot, so it's nowhere near the actual full release. But a considerable amount of ES5 is present in the, uh, the platform itself. There's ES5 shim is there. ES6 Promise is there and ES6 Weak Map, but I don't believe either are exposed. They're utilized in the studio itself uh, to help build the studio uh, platform so that you can actually utilize it. But as far as what's underneath the hood, it is, uh, it's pretty much not available. ES6, the only ES6 animal that is available to us and that came out with New York is Const. Uh, prior to that, you had to use ES Next to get at the Const. And for a very brief time, while we were still playing around with uh, New York after it released, um, we had let. So uh, the uh, let command was available. It's gone now. So I don't know what happened, if it got removed with a patch or you know it was just a fluke and it was exposed, but um, uh, the ES6 next stuff was, was there just for a moment and then it went away. So we have const and that's it. By the way, the editor is kind of interesting in this. Uh, it still flags const as reserved and not usable. And it will throw in a error in the editor, but it won't stop you from saving your code. So const is perfectly usable in JavaScript. And I use it pretty heavily. OK, uh, foundation uh, bits are Rhino. Uh, we're using 1.7 R5 and then prototype JS 1.7.3. These are very old. and uh, we keep hoping that uh, ServiceNow will upgrade J the entire JavaScript suite. So JavaScript, Rhino, prototype. Uh, I keep asking and they keep telling me it's coming. Um, hopefully with Paris, we'll see. It'll probably be later. All right, so Angular. Uh, we're using an older Angular as well, quite old, 4.0.0. Uh, uh, so, you know, uh, set your sites lower if you're doing any sort of Angular development and uh, 
understand that uh, hopefully, you know, that will, uh, you'll be able to find training materials. And I've got some I'll point out uh, that still address this older version. Some ver various JS libraries that are sitting there. Uh, jQuery and underscore are most prominent. Some aspects of jQuery are available to you, uh, not everything. Underscore, I've actually ported in the entire library. Um, not everything is available to you as a developer uh, underneath the hood, and you can't use the latest, uh, especially if it's founded on um, like ECMAScript 6 and greater. But uh, I have an article out there uh, I wrote for the community that tells you how to port underscore into a script include and make it available to you. But it's, again, it's limited compared to what's available to the now today. Uh, velocity, JSON parse.js, lodash, pdf.js, and sizzle. Uh, all these uh, JS libraries are sitting there. You've got to play a few games to get at them, uh, or you can't get at them at all, or they're uh, brought to you via the ServiceNow API. Uh, the editor underneath the hood is TinyMCE uh, Enterprise, and it's an old one too, uh, 4.1.7. However, uh, ServiceNow has enhanced this thing uh, to give us uh, in New York, uh, with New York is when we got some serious uh, upgrades here. Um, we now have, uh, you know, basically uh, the look ahead. Uh, you can actually uh, uh, go out and jump to other script includes um, uh, via the code base. So it's, it's possible to have IntelliSense type things, Microsoft and uh, uses the word IntelliSense to uh, allow pop-ups to show you what's available uh, in the editor. And uh, with with New York, we got quite a bit of this. It is pretty comprehensive. Uh, it will not take you to anything beyond the SNC libraries. So if ServiceNow has got something that's actually part of the platform and, and written in Java, some of it's exposed, some of it is not. And I'll talk a little bit about that here when we get to uh, the server side, uh, development side. Databases used to be MySQL. A while back, we, it was moved to MariaDB, which is a MySQL uh, lookalike. It, was, it is implemented as the hierarchical model and not the relational model. Uh, this is for a variety of reasons, um, namely speed, uh, read speed. Uh, it's extremely useful to know um, the where clause capability of MariaDB if you're working with uh, database views. Otherwise, uh, it can be useful in creating encoded queries, things like that to know uh, some of the where clause stuff. But encoded queries, ServiceNow has tapped in and uh, they have their own interpreter that uh, when you're working with Glide records and stuff, it, uh, it provides an interface that's a little, uh, a little bit more um, that, you know, a little bit more ServiceNow versus MariaDB, but it, MariaDB where clause stuff is extremely uh, useful when doing database views. Uh, Java libraries. Okay, so we have some of this available to us uh, in global. So packages.lang for the most part. Uh, some of the string stuff is suppressed for some reason. I haven't quite figured out. Uh, so if you're going for some of the uh, string matching libraries and things like that. Um, for example, uh, the uh, Jira Winkler uh, type library, which I've written on before, uh, is not available. I've, it's not exposed. Um, some of the packages that Ser ServiceNow wrote, they wrote a ton of them, uh, have been all moved to their API. And there is um, a really cool thing, which we're going to jump to right now, that tells you what all of these are. And uh, this is kind of interesting because they don't uh, promote these terribly much, and they should. Uh, down at the bottom of this article, and by the way, we'll be handing out this uh, deck so you'll have all these links available to you. Uh, they have a thing called packages call removal tool, which is supposed to search through your code and remove all package calls, or at least flag them. The real nice part about this, and they need to bust this apart. Uh, the nice part about this article is down at the bottom, they give a comprehensive list. And I mean, way down at the bottom. Here we go. Here's a comprehensive list, of all the glide scriptable object replacements and their original package calls. So this is a, a handy little reference. And these are from long time ago, but they give you an idea of all the different package calls that they pushed into the API and what's available in the API. Now, 
yeah, you know, you can go over to developer.servicenow.com uh, and you can look at the API there. I just look, uh, I use this as a reference uh, myself. Now there's no jumps from any of these, but you can just double click them and go look it up in the API to find out more. So there's a couple things and these are old, um, but it is interesting to go through this and understand all the different libraries that are available. Not everything is documented. Uh, you have to go look for examples in the code base. And there's a lot of stuff in here. You can see I'm still scrolling. This will take me a while. All right, so just give you an idea of uh, some of the tools that I use uh, to go look things up when I need to. Uh, what I'd like to see is a Java Lang um, version of the uh, packages list, but you kind of have to dig that out yourself and, and uh, go searching for it. I'll show you a little bit on that too. All right. So where can you script and service now? You know, all this platform stuff is nice and everything, but you wouldn't believe it. So actually, I've got a hint that if I loosen up my, um, my parameters, my search parameters on, you know, script capabilities throughout ServiceNow, and this includes HTML, XML, uh, you know, any sort of uh, tiny MCE scripting locations, you know, where you'd normally see the word script and anything else like that, there's 300 locations uh, right off the top. If you open up that constraint to things like condition fields um, and, uh, you know, various things for UI actions and stuff like that, all of a sudden that explodes and it can be up to 800. So it's insane, you know, the number of places. And these are separate tables where you can find coding going on. Now remember, inside ServiceNow, everything is data. So any script you write actually are data in a field on a record. Uh, these are interpreted by uh, a form of eval that goes on behind the scenes uh, that ServiceNow has built into the platform to actually execute your code. So any place where that can be done or where that, that particular uh, programming uh, methodology is used, then, you know, theoretically, I can drop JavaScript in there or an API call or whatever. So it's an insane number of places you can code inside of ServiceNow and it grows with every release. Okay, with portal programming, a um, couple of the technologies in use, uh, actually, it's a little more than this, but essentially Angular and ServiceNow API. Uh, we have Jelly to some degree. Uh, Jelly slowly but surely being worked out of the system. Uh, backward compatibility is still there, but um, if you're interested, it's called Apache Jelly. And um, I, I basically, there's a couple of places out there that, including Apache, that teach Apache Jelly still. Uh, so if you really need to learn it, uh, you can either look at examples and teach yourself. That's what I ended up doing. Uh, or going out and digging out a, uh, some sort of tutorial on it online. Uh, the other side of things is there are several uh, resources for learning Angular, and I'll get into those, and also the ServiceNow API. Um, one other thing I want to point out is there is a, a bit of HTML going on, and of course, um, you've also got the uh, JavaScript side of things on this. Forms programming, uh, we have various places to do that. Uh, we have various things we can use to do that. Um, there are libraries that ServiceNow has created. There are libraries that are available uh, via JavaScript. And then uh, we have the ability, of course, to uh, manipulate the form with uh, client scripts, UI policies, and then we have API calls. ServiceNow has been slowly but surely incorporating all document object model calls uh, in the form, like dollar, 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 any of that stuff uh, gets, is getting moved into the API slowly but surely. And uh, the reasoning behind it is to give a, a little bit easier uh, control uh, over the form uh, as a developer without having to learn multiple technologies. You just learn the one API's uh, set and you're all, all good. Um, browser programming, again, DOM, uh, document object model, uh, the API, of course, uh, and then regular HTML knowledge. So, uh, this will put you in good stead. HTML5, if you learn HTML5, uh, you'll, you'll be just fine inside of any sort of interface programming with ServiceNow. Server-side programming, a lot of different places to uh, that code can land. Um, 
new word, bajillion. Um, there, it's anything that isn't part of the form uh, ends up on server side. So all the heavy lifting is done by the server, um, servers now server, and uh, also by mid server. You can throw heavy lifting to it too. Now the mid server is a very interesting and a little bit enigmatic tool. It has grown significantly over the years. It used to be real small. Now it's uh, starting to get to the point where the footprint is ridiculous. It's over 200 megabytes or roughly that. Um, it's got some aspects to it that you're probably not aware of. Uh, you can actually uh, develop using third-party tools against mid-server script includes and have the ServiceNow platform offload stuff to other tools. And this is how a lot of third parties are integrating their products with ServiceNow right now, uh, where it's a tight integration. And uh, there are tools like uh, ServiceNow Discovery, which utilize this methodology, the mid-server programming side of life. Okay, something that is a real can of worms when it comes to ServiceNow. What, a, what do we do about standards? You know, and this is a huge hue and cry out there right now on the community. Uh, we fight this battle internally and with our customers. And uh, a lot of times we have to give guidance and recommendations. Uh, the first thing that crops up is should we write it ourselves, or should we uh, rely on someone else having written a good one and posted it out for everyone else's consumption? Well, uh, as far as our practice is concerned, right now we're pretty close to the Airbnb um, version here. Uh, and it's free and it's very nicely done. It's uh, robust. Google has one out there. If you go out and take a look at their JavaScript style guide, it's excellent. Uh, I prefer the Airbnb because it gives better examples, uh, ones that are more pertinent, I think, to the um, scripting inside service now, but you know, pick your poison. Drupal, by the way, I tripped across that one a while back and I really like it. It's uh, not bad, uh, but anyway, you can Google this stuff and figure it out for yourself. Just, you know, and it really isn't necessary to write one for yourself. Uh, you can pick one, edit it out, anything that you consider to be bureaucracy and, uh, you know, uh, pick the best practices, you know, formatting guides, uh, naming conventions, things like that are really what you're after. Uh, consistency of coding something you can teach your developers and then have the developers actually utilize it so that maintenance is simpler and it's uh, standardized formats. So commenting practices, things like that. Okay, what does ServiceNow have in the way of this? They have a scripting technical best practices link and it's pretty good, it's fairly comprehensive. It goes through uh, the ServiceNow API to some degree. There's an older one out there that's still available and I'm giving you a link to it because I still think it's relevant is coding best practices um, site out on the old wiki. How they recommend it. I also have written a few articles on this and I threw them in for grins and giggles. You don't have to take them as by rote, but uh, I was recommending some uh, better practices and ways of doing things inside ServiceNow. So I went ahead and threw those links in for, uh, for y'all. Okay, design patterns and practices. This is an area that is almost completely missing from inside the uh, ServiceNow documentation. Uh, there's partly a reason for that in the sense that uh, ServiceNow is really a tool construction company. So they, you know, however you wanna use the tool, whatever way you wanna do it, what process you wanna use to do things is up to the person uh, who's doing development. And I agree with that. Um, ServiceNow really isn't in the business of necessarily telling you exactly how to use your tool. Um, they can give best recommendations, but it's, you know, it's a pass, folks, you know, platform as a service. The whole intent of the platform is to be able to morph it to your own business needs and the capabilities of the platform are legion. So, you know, if ServiceNow has best practices and recommendations, great, thumbs up, I'll take a look at them. And they do. But as far as the best practices for pattern level type stuff and SDLC recommendations, things like that. They're out there, um, but it takes some serious digging. I pulled a bunch of my own expertise together. I've been at this for 37 years now. Uh, and um, so I, I wrote a bunch of articles back, gosh, almost five years now, and they're still relevant, still pertinent. But um, 
you know, the SDLC is modifiable to ServiceNow development, and I highly recommend adopting some sort of process for, um, you know, and this is, of course, I'm not all inclusive on every probability here, but uh, it's good to actually get your uh, feet planted as far as developing in ServiceNow and having a process that your, uh, that your teams follow, uh, not only with standards, but also with uh, movement of code. So there you go. Um, I threw in a couple extras. Code Academy's got a couple of really nice uh, UI best practice uh, learning uh, sites. I believe they're free. So uh, don't quote me on that necessarily, but uh, a lot of what Code Academy pushes out is free unless you uh, include their pro version. So I don't think these are pro. Um, the top one there is an interesting site. It originally, uh, Microsoft had a phenomenal amount of stuff sitting out there that was called the Microsoft Patterns and Practices site. And it has almost completely disappeared or been rearranged. And it's unfortunate. They published an entire set of books. And if you can still latch onto some of them, probably eBay these days, but um, if you can latch onto them, they're worth worthwhile. And they tell you how to design user interfaces. They tell you how the, what the best practices are for uh, system flow and architecture and everything else. Uh, the one site they still maintain that is excellent is uh, a pattern site underneath um, Docs Microsoft. And I highly recommend going out and just kind of perusing through it. This doesn't give good practices necessarily for database end of things. I've got another site for that. But um, it, they do have quite a few design patterns for cloud programming. So I thought I'd throw that in and uh, give you some more to think about. JavaScript. Okay, so this is where it really all should start, right? Um, there are a ton of them out there. Uh, these are the top four in my book right now. Actually, I would arrange plural site to the very top, but it is um, it is a pay for. And if you do the Code Academy Pro one, it's a pay for. They have a freebie sitting out there that's just the labs, uh, hands-on labs, but uh, the Pro has the lectures. I highly recommend doing the lecture thing. Uh, both of them are monthly. Uh, they get some sort of, uh, you know, they, they, you have to provide a credit card kind of thing. And then once you signed up, you have access to their materials. And then just, you know, uh, it's a self-paced uh, type thing. I like Pluralsight. Uh, it used to be Code School and Pluralsight bought them out, but they maintain their, uh, the same materials and they really are excellent. So, you get an opportunity to take these things. Uh, I highly recommend it. Udemy's and Linda's are good, but they're not organized well in my in my opinion. So uh, Code, Code Academy will take you from beginner to intermediate. Pluralsight takes you from beginner to advanced because they get into the best practices of JavaScript programming. Udemy and Linda, they got them all over the place. Um, you have to kind of, it's up to you to organize it so that you're actually incrementally going through and learning things from beginner to advanced. So there you go. I like it organized for me. I don't like to have to work at it. Uh, if I'm learning something, I don't want to have to do the extra uh, work with it. And I really wish these guys would organize it a little bit better, but that's that. All right, some books. All right, as a developer in ServiceNow, I highly, highly recommend JavaScript, The Good Parts by Douglas Crockford. This book um, is still released version one. Notice the date. He's coming out with a version two soon, and it's scary to me. Uh, as long as they keep version one around, it'll be excellent for ServiceNow. Uh, he's got a little bit of ECMA 6 in the last chapter of this book. In the new one coming out, which is supposed to be released here in the next month or two, uh, he'll probably orient it completely to ECMA 6 and greater. Um, that's the scary part because we're not at ECMA 6 in the platform at all. But uh, this book has tons of really fantastic examples. You can copy them out of the book. Um, it is available as a, um, uh, as a Kindle. And so you can copy them from your Kindle book side of things. It's, um, it's not a very thick book. If you order the physical copy, it's like a quarter inch thick. Um, but the examples in here, you can drop them straight into 
your um, like scripts background or fixed script side of things and punch the button and they work. So I can't begin to emphasize this book enough as far as uh, programming and service now. The, um, I have a physical copy. I've literally read it through three times. Okay, shoot me, I'm a nerd. Uh, but you know, it's, it, it's that important to me in my scripting career with ServiceNow. So there you go. And it's available on Amazon or you can get it through, I believe it's Safari. So yeah, it's O'Reilly. So you can get it through Safari. You don't know JS, um, JavaScript. I don't know where your mind was going, but anyway, the You Don't Know JS series, outstanding. Um, can't emphasize this one enough. For beginners, start with the up and going book. It will literally introduce you as if you don't know anything about programming at all, and it works inside ServiceNow, really nice. The follow books, there are a total of six in the series. I wish he'd write some more on it, but he's pretty much hit just about every topic. He expands on what Crockford has done and he does it on topical base. So uh, he goes into the JavaScript types and grammars. He goes into the this object, folks. This is a huge deal with script includes. So that's that next book down there, the this and object prototypes, highly useful with ServiceNow programming. Uh, the advanced JavaScript book by Kyle Simpson is pretty good. And there are a couple others out there, but this is my, my top picks right now. I have all of the uh, Don't Know JS series. They're really excellent. If I get stuck on things these days, which doesn't happen that much, but if I do, I'll go uh, take a look at those books. So now what about ServiceNow scripting? Well, once you've mastered or you know, gotten to intermediate level, I should say, uh, you're not necessarily masters, mastering the intricacies of JavaScript, but you know it well enough that you can program it. Um, that's my general recommendation for going to this level. Okay, so now you want to know ServiceNow API. You want to know what it can be done. Take the scripting and ServiceNow fundamentals class. It's worth the nickel. It has everything in it. It's a good survey of everything. Uh, script includes, client scripts, everything is sitting there, including service catalog programming, the whole nine yards. It's all there. Highly recommend it. Application development and fundamentals is kind of an overlap in some places with sysadmin and scripting, but really does focus on scoped development. And taking that, uh, you get the voucher, uh, the application development fundamentals, you get the voucher uh, for taking the app dev uh, certification test. But um, you can, you know, you can get a phenomenal amount from the free stuff, uh, the developer courses up there. Uh, that link will take you and let's let's go take a look at this real quick. I think you'll want to see this one too. So this particular location uh, is all of the courses available for free off of the developer site. Now this is a taste of everything in my book. It really doesn't give you the depth and breadth obviously that the pay for uh, courses that ServiceNow provides uh, would give you, but it's not bad. Um, and you can see it's a pretty, pretty good list of things, uh, service portal. And these are things you do in your own personal developer instance. So if you want to learn about stuff like building apps with Angular JS, you actually can start these modules and start working through both of these. Well, the top one here, Angular JS. And uh, if you go into the course, there's 12 lessons in this course. So pretty good. I mean, a really neat thing. And uh, you get the introduction and you get to work with this in your personal developer instance, which by the way, is one of the tools I wanted to mention. So there's ServiceNow Developer. The number one tool for learning ServiceNow programming uh, is to uh, get an account and log into this and then ask for your free instance right here, this free instance. Uh, when you request a personal developer instance, affectionately known as PDI, uh, you get a uh, actual working ServiceNow instance. Now, the downside to this is it isn't a developer and test type environment for things like studio programming. So you can't play with deployment, but everything else is there. Now with that, you can set up service mapping, you can set up your own uh, mid servers, you can set up discovery, you can program these various areas. You can install orchestration, integration hub. You can do flow designer development. This is the do-it-all uh, Swiss knife for uh, learning 
programming in ServiceNow. So I can't emphasize getting this enough. I've had one since forever. So when we, when ServiceNow first came out with this tool, uh, that's when I started using it. So there you go. All right, so back to this. Uh, the other one is I have quite a few articles out there and I'm shamelessly promoting my own articles here, but uh, I highly recommend going out and at least perusing through this to see what's available. I wanna warn you, they are intermediate to advanced. I've just got very few things I do with beginner. Beginner, it's pretty, there are better resources like this developer courses list. Um, so I cover things that aren't so obvious or not documented at all. And uh, that's where I ended up writing most of my articles. Um, that's pretty much it right here. Let's see, go down to the next one, interface programming. All right, so this one's a little trickier to find uh, material on to be able to learn how to do things and what's the best practices behind them. I provided a handful of links here, but as far as best practices uh, for developing your own interfaces, boy, that's hard to find for ServiceNow. So I ended up turning to uh, other areas. ServiceNow has got some, you know, concepts like, you know, the uh, uh, description of their UI. Uh, there's an excellent KI or K18 session out there that someone put together. Uh, I forget who it was, and we'll go take a look real quick. This is like a mini lab from, it's a CreatorCon lab, or set of labs. And they did a nice job with uh, UI interface. And I don't see their names on this, probably could find out pretty easily. But this is a uh, this is an excellent tool, and uh, you know, just coming out here and learning the interface and the application behind it and everything else. But developing in the uh, in this area requires knowing how to design them better, and that's where I'm going with this. It's very difficult to find design principles. Uh, again, Microsoft used to have an excellent site. Uh, they've rewritten it, and it's kind of okay now, but it's user interface principles. And so all these things here all the way down, uh, by the way, some of the ones that I don't, you know, I don't condone anymore. And it's because the standards have shifted out there as far as, uh, you know, user interfaces are concerned, things like alert boxes, uh, developers shouldn't be using alert boxes anymore, uh, especially with ServiceNow, you should be using uh, G form uh, add info or add error messages or coming up with something else. Um, there is, uh, you know, the anti-modal crowd has really kicked in these days. Modal boxes being you yank the, um, uh, yank the control away from the uh, customer completely or the user completely and keep them from doing anything but having to close that box before they can move on. And that's considered bad practice. So alert boxes equals bad practice right now for a lot of uh, the different uh, interface designers out there. So Google, Microsoft, several other designers, uh, designer crowds have set up their own uh, best practices and standards with that. That's uh, what this is all about. So, you know, using standards and they get into how to draw attention. What's the best way to create a button? You know, what's the easiest way to grab uh, people's uh, attention? Uh, what's the best and most professional usage of, you know, graphics and things like that. These are excellent. And they talk to uh, things that we don't necessarily have inside ServiceNow, but there's quite a bit here that is very useful for ServiceNow development. So user interface development. Portal programming. So this place is getting a rework. I'll just put that out there right now. And we're going to see some serious changes in the next couple of releases of ServiceNow. Uh, hints are coming out already as to a, uh, you know, uh, better development abilities and everything else in the uh, front end. But right now, this is what we got. Um, so we have a couple of classes. Both of them are very good uh, for portal programming and ServiceNow. If you are serious about the craft and you really want to know how to uh, write for ServiceNow, uh, this is the, these, just take these two classes. Uh, you'll get certified afterward um, and it's, it's a worthwhile thing to do. Okay, if you need to learn Angular, 
ServiceNow does not teach Angular. They teach their uh, programming their APIs with Angular involved. So uh, Pluralsight does an outstanding job. Uh, Code Academy does not have anything specifically on Angular, um, but Pluralsight's got a couple of them. I like the, the one I've got on Arrow 2. It actually uh, seems to be better for ServiceNow development. Udemy and Linda both have uh, Angular stuff on them too. And again, it's scattered all over creation on these two. Um, they actually have more material on these two than you'll find at Pluralsight. Pluralsight has a set of videos and uh, that first one, I think it's like 12 videos, 10 videos, something like that. Udemy and, and Linda, it's like every topic under the sun with Angular. So it doesn't really take you and walk you through beginner. You have to go locate a beginning in uh, Angular uh, video. And then it's not all by the same people, so you don't get it the same quality. Anyway, I prefer the more professional crowds to that, uh, release things through a standard themselves. Okay. Uh, HTML and CSS. Okay, so cascading style sheets. ServiceNow uses these very heavily all over the place. Uh, and in some places, they're weird. Uh, emails, for example, uh, require some strange stuff. It's mostly inline uh, CSS. I've, I've developed some odd things for it now that allow me to have like CSS library capability for emails, but you have to really work hard to get to that level. Uh, UI pages. I've written some articles, by the way, on uh, embedding CSS in emails, if you're interested. Uh, UI pages, of course, um, and it's pretty straightforward in that. And then CSS for portal work, obviously. Uh, any HTML5 knowledge so you can uh, learn. So I threw a couple of Code Academy uh, self pace uh, freebies up there uh, that I felt like, like were decent and will teach you the basics of HTML5 and CSS. Uh, the ServiceNow API has pretty much taken over the doc document object model uh, because of the scope safe stuff. So DOM does not work inside scope. Uh, let me say that again. DOM does not work inside scope. So lately I've been avoiding DOM altogether. As much as I love it and its usefulness, I've found alternatives in the ServiceNow API for everything. And I kid you not, it's all there. You just have to figure out how to use it. <clears throat> there aren't a lot of examples either. That's a painful part. Uh, I'm talking about moving from DOM to ServiceNow API. You gotta kind of make the connections yourself. And there's nothing I can have you jump to. Um, uh, the emails thing, I just go dig it out on my articles list, but uh, there's nothing on this, this first three. Okay, regular expressions. So we use these a lot inside JavaScript for string matching, uh, quite a bit in replacement. Uh, there's also other areas like uh, working inside service mapping, uh, inside discovery patterns and things like that. Uh, uh, Regular expressions are used all over the place. One thing I want to point out is if you are doing uh, regular expressions inside of uh, service mapping or discovery patterns, it is an extremely small subset of what's actually available. Uh, so I highly recommend the uh, taking one or other of ServiceNow's classes if you want to know more about how to program uh, patterns. Uh, those are very specific to those products. All right, so that aside, everything else does work in JavaScript. So uh, there are a couple of really good uh, cheat sheets sitting out there and one tutorial. Uh, so using uh, regedit with Windows is a good thing to know. It is uh, not regular expressions, but it's excellent for programming against Windows devices or drawing back information from Windows devices is probably a better way to put that. Um, don't forget you're using mid-server usually on a Windows device, even though there are two flavors. The other one, Linux, is extremely uh, limited in what it can, its capabilities are. The one on Windows is uh, very robust and has a tremendous amount of capability. So I always work with Windows mid-servers, in which case, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, you want to know more about Windows development. And that means regular uh, regedit, uh, regular expressions, and uh, other Windows programming uh, capabilities. Uh, the plural site one is actually pretty decent. Uh, that breaking the ice with regular expressions is a hands-on with uh, videos. So I really like it. Again, I'm not plugging this 
and uh, you know i'm not getting kickbacks from these guys they just have some good material and i highly recommend it powershell and uh, you know that microsoft thing again so I use this pretty heavily when dealing with things like Active Directory, uh, orchestration, integration hub. Um, I've done a tremendous amount of work with third party tools. Uh, sometimes the only way you can actually do something is through Microsoft's PowerShell 2.0 or greater uh, with the mid servers. And, uh, you know, it's just get to know it. It's really one of those skills you want to want to know. This is not taught by us in uh, the ServiceNow realm. So there isn't anything, uh, even though this is heavily used when dealing with mid servers, it is not something that we teach inside of uh, the ServiceNow training paradigm. So it's not even any articles on how to use this with ServiceNow. So it, you know, learn PowerShell. And then if you get involved with things like orchestration or integration hub, uh, start digging out articles on it. I've written several. But this is a little more of an advanced topic, and uh, but it is a good skill to pick up. This I found this to be an excellent uh, training course, by the way, from Microsoft. Okay, something that should be near and dear to our hearts, but probably is not the first thing we think of when we're doing development on uh, ServiceNow, as far as uh, best practices and things like that, is unit testing. So I wrote an article a while back on how developers should be more focused on uh, what happens with quality and uh, quality assurance and how unit testing needs to be heavily implemented in their, um, in their development process. So ServiceNow has provided an excellent tool for this and that is the automated test framework. They have provided hands-on training, self-paced hands-on training with a free certificate if you complete this, you get a voucher and you can go take the certificate for ATF. I can't push this one enough. Uh, it's an excellent course. Uh, I went out and took it just to see what it was like and then went on to get my microcert. So I have this one and uh, it is worth getting to know. You need to start incorporating this into your development projects in ServiceNow. It covers so much now. And lately uh, with the advent of um, Madrid, we got the ability to program uh, ATF steps. So we can build our own test steps now that are coded. So if we have something special that we need to bring in that isn't handled out of the box, we can now develop it ourselves. And uh, this is non-configurable type stuff. So uh, building your own uh, you know, coded web service interface, for example, is very doable now. Uh, if you need to go get information to help you with the uh, the particular test step you're developing. But highly recommend going into learning ATF and incorporating it into your overall unit testing best practice. Uh, there are a couple excellent best practices for JavaScript sitting out there that are worth kind of reviewing when you're building your ATF steps. These give you some ideas, uh, good ideas on how to exercise your JavaScript code. Uh, you know, it'd be essentially your scripts underneath the hood. And uh, it's worth just reviewing these uh, and then thinking about how you would interpret uh, them into an ATF step. I also provided down there at the bottom uh, three articles I wrote. I also did a, a video on this stuff um, on debugging and logging. Some of this is scoped. The majority of it is not. It works in both. So I uh, highly recommend going out and taking a peek at you know, some of the capabilities available to you and uh, perhaps incorporating them into your process. We had a quick question on sure. the, uh, YouTube. It was, please explain how we can use the translation HTML template of a widget. Okay, so yeah, there's, you know, templates that you can build that will help you get across the line faster. And, um, you know, as far as, as a resource is concerned, ServiceNow is now creating templates for various things out there. Also copying, uh, ServiceNow is now providing copies. So if I understand the question correctly, it's the fact that ServiceNow actually provides these things and gives you the capability of, uh, of uh, you know, either copying an existing one and, and dupli you know, getting the duplicate functionality and morphing it the way you need it. Um, 
there's a lot of that out there, by the way. And then as far as the widgets are concerned, you know, same kind of thought process. So I guess, you know, it's the fact that it does exist out there. I don't want to get into developing in that stuff in this session. So, uh, but I, you know, that's a good point. It, they do provide those kind of resources for you and you learn how to use those in uh, the classwork if you take their courses in uh, portal development. Okay, a couple extra resources. ServiceNow's code base is insane um, for the most part. So going out to a couple things. First off, I want to demo where stats is. So if you go to system diagnostic stats, stats, click on that. This will bring up the stats list. This is usually just things that we look at as far as number of workers, uh, you know, number of things. And this is my personal developer instance. But the big one is this little link right here called open source software, which most people don't even notice it's there. This is probably the best kept secret in the platform. Uh, it is a chunk of um, XML. This whole page is a chunk of XML underneath the hood. You, there is a table with a record uh, that you can go grab and pull this information back and parse it if you want to. But underneath this link, awesome. It's a 4,000 page document about everything ServiceNow uh, in the platform. And I'm not logged in. How do you like them apples? Come on. I hate it when it does that. All right, it's been a while since I was here, like about 45 minutes. Stats, stats, click on the link. You can also do this by navigating directly to stats.do and then going to uh, this particular link. This is out in the assist attachments table out of the box, by the way. And it is updated whenever patching is done or um, you know platform upgrades are done. So this is the latest I have for Orlando patch zero, because that's where my uh, personal developer instance is located. And yes, 4,000 pages takes a while to load. <laughs> Almost there. Should have downloaded the PDF and just opened it up rather than showing you this. I've had more trouble with demos lately. All right, so I'm going to open up another window here while it's off doing that one. It probably won't let me. Yeah, it let me. Okay, so item number two, uh, while it's loading up the big old honking PDF back there, uh, we're going to go take a look at a couple of things. So for script includes, for example, uh, just go out and you have 4,000 script includes. Well, it's probably a little bit less than that. It's probably more like 3,900 or so, maybe 4,000. I've got a lot that I've built in my own personal developer instance, so it's not fair. But uh, these are all useful for digging out stuff uh, about the platform. Now, searching this can be painful. Um, you can you know, go in and do the usual filtering and actually looking inside what's in the script field and uh, you know, search for packages, let's say it contains packages.java and see if there's how many of these are left and there's quite a few. Um, let's look in time card utils and take a look here. All the packages.com stuff is pretty much gone. So they're using, um, and this won't work inside of scope by the way, but they're using packages.java.util.timezone. So it, you get, that string dot util and several other Java uh, examples are sitting out there. So you can poke around and locate these things. If we wanted to, we could have searched on everything that's packages.java. But um, you get the idea, there's that one. You also have the ability to um, build an application, uh, a dummy application inside Studio. And what this does for you is allows you to, um, you know, like they'll use the old fashioned loaner request. This is my dummy one. I'll go to code search. And if you do search in all applications, it searches 31 tables, uh, coding tables out there. So if I go packages.java.lang, let's see how many are out there. This should give us all the string language locations. There's one, not very many, three so far. Oh, there we go, 26. 
So here's a thread. I saw a string, so there were several strings, but you can see it went out and searched all that. So, um, you know, business rules, uh, various programs, you can jump straight to it and look at the example. It'll show you the code, you know, all sorts of nice things. And uh, just open up the arrow a little bit and it'll actually show you where it found it. Here's another thread. There's a string. I wish we had the deeper string libraries available to us, but we do not. But this allows you to go searching for API calls, everything else in the entire code base. So very nice. All right, let's go back and see if, the, yeah, finally came up. So for example, if I wanna search for Rhino, um, there you go. There's the current Rhino that's being used, uh, 1.7 R5. Uh, this is all the, the stack that's sitting out there. It's insane, sizzle. And so you can spend a lot of time poking around on this thing, trying to find out stuff. There's all the tiny MCE stuff. But you get the idea, uh, there's the underscore. Some of these libraries, even though they're part of the platform, are not available. Uh, ServiceNow has locked them down. But this is what makes up the platform. Yeah, Have you had found any anomalies with the tiny MCE or anything that you would want to, you know, is there anything out there? I'm sorry, what was the question? On, on the tiny M MCE, do you find if there's any anomalies um, in using it with your HTML needs? Yeah. OK. <laughs> yeah, I don't use it for HTML. I don't use it for um, any sort of editing of Angular. Um, JavaScript, it's probably the best for it right now, but I'm still using stuff like Notepad++ to do JavaScript development. Uh, there's recently a VS Code integration that was, uh, uh, I guess, represented. Uh, it's been around for a while, but it, it got represented uh, by ServiceNow recently, and uh, people got all excited about it. Um, it really is as close as we get to an integration between an external editor and ServiceNow proper. Uh, I've thought about developing one for Notepad++, but it will require quite a bit of work. So I've got other things to do. And, uh, I've got a day job and uh, sometimes that leaks over into night job. But um, yeah, uh, there's a lot of things that can be done uh, in that realm. Uh, ServiceNow gives us no configuration. Tiny MCE is a configurable animal, but we have no configuration capabilities for it. So you can't change the colors. You can't change the background, foreground, color of the, of the font. Can't change font size. Can't change indentation. You get the idea. So there's a lot of things I don't like. Uh, another anomaly is a defect actually in the older tiny MCE that was fixed in a later revision. And that is if you comment out something like an if statement and then format the uh, code, it gets it wrong and it starts indent uh, recursively down and it just keeps indenting down from wherever you had your if statement looking for the end of the if, but which won't be there. So it gets all confused and, and happily indents your entire uh, script uh, all the way down. <laughs> it's horrible looking. Uh, just remember that you can undo. All right, so a couple other things I wanted to bring out on this. You have tons of examples by ServiceNow, but there's another interesting thing on these uh, with the code basis as far as it's concerned. And that is, is that um, people like me uh, who, you know, I live, eat and breathe this stuff. I go out and I familiarize myself with the latest and greatest that's been created by ServiceNow's development team for their platform after every release. So when Orlando came out, uh, and of course we got to look at it first, or one of the first peoples after the beta, we got the uh, preview of it on our personal developer instances. We were allowed to upgrade to it early on. And so we're able to go take a look at the code base. Um, that code base, uh, the latest stuff has new Glide uh, calls in it that haven't been documented yet. At least documentation is out now, but it wasn't then. So I get to see the latest and greatest coming out and I get to ponder how it's being used and how I can use it in my everyday business. So I get uh, I get a lot of a lot out of uh, going out and just reviewing, um, you know, date descending and looking at all the uh, new code that's been developed. Um, finally, there's a really cool little 
uh, PDF sitting out there that ServiceNow wrote, and I want it to come up, and it's not doing it. Yes, I want you to open this. And uh, this is a really great uh, uh, tool. So ServiceNow is keeping this relatively up to date. It's their training and cert certification learning paths. And what they've done is they've um, put this out on a PDF format. And notice my mouse is drifting over these things. So this includes everything that's out on learning right now and then everything that's a class. And so if it's freebie, uh, I can jump straight to it out on learning. If it's a class, it takes me to where I can go sign up. But this gives you a progression for um, learning. So let's scroll down here a little ways. Uh, field management, governance. Of course, we're probably all the way at the bottom being developers. That's how it usually goes, right? So here's application development. <laughs> Near, okay, so we're midway down, but here you go. These are all of the different courses that ServiceNow provides or the training materials for microcertification. Notice uh, the new platform subscription model, which is the licensing side, is not out yet. Um, it's coming out this month. So the old one got retired back in February, and ServiceNow has some seriously great changes in their licensing model, which are going to help us out as developers. Uh, we're no longer, uh, there used to be a penalization practically for doing any sort of scope development. And that has now been uh, eased up on significantly. So uh, we don't get dinged for developing stuff on our own platforms now. Uh, the scripting of ServiceNow Fundamentals class is excellent. ATF is the uh, self-paced. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Application development, of course. And then Integration Hub, self-paced. I highly recommend doing Flow Designer before doing Integration Hub so that you get to know it. SecOps, sysadmin, developer, here we go. So this is a no code development uh, path, a uh, very good one. So yes, that stuff's starting to grow out there. And here's the app, another application developer, so low pro code. So again, this is a great tool it's got a lot of stuff out there and it talks about all the specialized areas. So service portal. So there you go. All right. So the takeaways, there's a huge number of technologies to learn. So a lot of stuff out there. I didn't even crack the box open on things like database programming or widget programming or anything like that. And obviously there's so much out there. Uh, but I, what I tried to do with this is just give you an idea of what you had available to you uh, and where you could go next to find out more. Significant number of places inside ServiceNow you can script. So it's, it's insane. I've got to go back and rework my article and discover all the latest and greatest places. Uh, there's also a huge number of resources to tap to learn how to program in ServiceNow. And they're not all just ServiceNow. So they're learning the technologies that actually ServiceNow is founded on and then going to ServiceNow's classes to learn how to uh, go from there. Okay. Now we're pretty much out of time. I ran us down to two minutes. Uh, do you have any questions? Anybody have anything they'd like to ask? I had to take myself off of mute. We have a, um, someone who said, this is Venki. Can you put some light on callback functions? Do you recommend to use them, for example, for asynchronous calls that can adopt uh, the JavaScript callback function? Uh, yes, and it's considered a best practice to use callbacks uh, with, a, you know, with AJAX or with the get reference. Um, get reference, uh, the downside to using get reference is the fact that it, uh, it's a single call out, whereas with AJAX, you can lump things together uh, using JSON and uh, throw things outbound on JSON and get them back as a JSON object. So it's possible to gang things together and throw them out. Um, I use both uh, methods very heavily. I try to stay away from synchronous as much as possible. And that includes ace, you know, using asynchronous business rules. So it's a good idea to use asynchronous business rules. Um, there, you know, especially if you're building something that's an after um, business role, rethink it and look at async to do it. If you don't care about returning uh, control to the user, synchronous is fine. And ServiceNow uses synchronous on several things out there. But 
it's just that one I, I push that one down whenever I can use async. Async improves the user experience. Anything you can do to use the improve the user experience, take it. So there. <laughs> Anybody else? Mm, not sure yet. Don't see one. Okay. Well, we got to close this down. We've now one o'clock. Um, um, welcome every, anyone to uh, continue posting your questions on the community link that has been provided in the chat and in the descriptions. Um, and we look forward to having you all join us on our next Ask the Expert event. Um, and also, Stephen, if you want to do a quick plug for anything that you're going to be doing at Knowledge, you'll be in and around it, right? Yeah, I've got a uh, creator con. It hasn't been uh, figured out what date it's going to be on yet. Uh, CCW 2583, 2583. Um, the, um, uh, what we're doing is advanced uh, scoped application development. So uh, it's me and Keith Mills will be presenting that. Uh, he is a certified master ar architect and uh, we've uh, pulled together a lot of really good material. Um, that's the big plug. So there you go. And then I'll be doing, I'll be doing uh, several sessions for the MVP team. So wonderful. All right, we look forward to it. Thank you all. Have a great afternoon or evening or morning. Thank you. <laughs> Take care.